last we left off, Kyle, for the first time in his life, wanted to check out a book more than anything in the world. Chapter 14. How about we work together, said Akimi when she sat down at Kyle's table. Hmm? Kyle couldn't take his eyes off of Sierra Russell. See, she had drifted up 25 feet, was leaning against the platform of her floating platform, and completely was lost in a new book. Hello, Earth to Kyle. Uh, do you want somebody else to get first dibs on the Electronic Learning Center? No. Then focus. Okay, how do we use our wits in the library to find dessert? Akimi nodded toward Miguel, whose fingers were dancing across the screen on the desktop's tablet computer. I think he's doing a search in the card catalog, whispered Akimi. Why? I don't know. It's how you find stuff in a library, Kyle. I know that, but we're not looking for books about dessert. We need to find the actual dessert. Andrew Peckelman stood up from his desk and sprinted toward a spiral staircase leading to the second floor. Two seconds later, Charles Chiltington was sprinting up the staircase right behind him. All the other players soon followed. Everybody was headed to the second floor and the Dewey Decimal Rooms. Miguel popped up from his desk and made a mad dash for the nearest staircase. It's gotta be in the 600s, you guys, he called out to Kyle at Akimi. Thanks, said Kyle, but he still didn't budge from his seat. I guess the 600s is the Dewey Decimal category where you get to find books about desserts, said Akimi. Maybe we should, wait a second, said Kyle. Um, Kyle, in case you haven't noticed, you, me, and glider girl Sierra are the only ones still on this floor. And Sierra isn't on the floor. She's kind of floating. Hang on, Akimi. I have an idea. Kyle pulled out his floor hand. His floor plan. Dessert is probably hiding in plain sight. Just like the bonus codes in the squirrel squad. Follow me. Where to? The book nook cafe. It's the one room in the library where, according to Dr. Zinchenko, who told us back at the hotel, food and drinks are actually allowed. They strolled into the cozy cafe. Woohoo! shouted Akimi. The walls were decorated with shelves of cookbooks and te several tables loaded with trays of cookies, cakes, ice cream, and fruit. That's why the curtains were closed behind the windows in the rotunda, said Akimi, so we wouldn't see all the food and dessert. Way to go, Kyle. Kyle did his best imitation of Charles Chiltington. I'm Akili, Akimi. We never lose, except of course when we don't. After everyone had dessert, Kyle and Akimi were the first ones allowed in the electronic learning center. Yeah. So remember, they didn't win the first battle, did they? But they won the second one. They found dessert because the food was only allowed in the Book Nook Cafe. So Kyle used his clues, what Dr. Zinchenko said, and why the curtains were closed, and they were the first ones to find it. So they get to go to the electronic learning center, or what Ian called the video game room. Kyle flew the space shuttle. He made an excellent landing on Mars before crashing into one of Saturn's moons. Akimi rode a horse with Paul Revere. Then Kyle learned how to drive a stick shift stock car on the Talladega racetrack. Akimi climbed into a tiny submarine and swam with dolphins and sea turtles, all of which were projected on the glass of her underwater sea simulator. All the educational video games had 3D digital, visuals, digital surround sound, and something new that Mr. Lemoncello was developing for his video games, smell-a-vision. Get it? Said a television, smell-a-vision. You, when you sacked Rome, you could smell the smoky scent of the burning city as well as the barbarians B.O. Do you know what B.O. is? Body odor. Stinky. After an 
hour, doctors and Chinko ushered everybody else into the Electronic Learning Center. They'd been watching George Washington debate George W. Bush. See, both were audio animatronic. And they were in the town square at the center of the 900s room. At 10 p.m., they all tromped into the IMAX theater, also on the third floor, to see a jukebox concert. 3D images of the world's best musicians, living and dead, performed their hits live. The best part was Mozart was jamming with Metallica. So Mozart is a very, very old classical musician. Metallica was a rock band, like a hard rock band. Finally, after three in the morning, Clarence and his twin brother, Clement, you remember, those are the security guards, they came to escort the kids to their sleeping camp quarters. The boys would roll out their sleeping bags in the children's room, just off the rotunda. The girls would be upstairs on the third floor in the boardroom. Charles Chiltington would be luxuriating all alone in Mr. Lemoncello's private suite. Exhausted from the excitement of the day and crashing after eating way too much sugar, Kyle slept like a baby. He only woke up because he heard music loud, blaring music. The theme song from that boxing movie, Rocky, his brother's favorite. What's up? He mumbled, crawling out of his sleeping bag. Kyle glanced at his watch. It was 11 a.m. He figured the library lock-in was officially over. This was just the group's wake-up call. The music kept blaring. This is how they wake up astronauts, groaned Miguel. Oh, turn it off, moaned Andrew Peckelman. Kyle slipped on his jeans and his sneakers and staggered out to the giant reading room. Dr. Zinchenko? His voice echoed off in the dome. No answer. Clarence? Clement? Nothing. The rocky music got louder. Kimi leaned in from the third floor balcony. What's going on down there? I think they're trying to wake up astronauts, said Kyle, all the way on the moon. He made his way to the front door and reached for the handle. The front door wouldn't budge. He jiggled it. Nothing. He jiggled harder. Still nothing. Kyle realized the library lock-in might be over, but they were still locked in the library.